The Legend of Dragoon has gameplay that can be incredibly punishing, particularly for new players. So in this video, I'm gonna give you 11 tips and tricks that will help you master the gameplay in The Legend of Dragoon. I'm Tantacles, hello. Make sure to watch to the end of the video to get the maximum benefit from all of these tips. And make sure to leave me a comment if I missed something. First, let's go over some basic tips that apply to any JRPG. Number one, save often. If you die, it sucks to have to go back and repeat four hours of what you already did. And cutscenes in this game can't be skipped, which makes it even worse. Number two, use the rewind function, not only because you can avoid death, but also because this game freezes if you do the wrong thing, like using a Dragoon animation. Hopefully that will be fixed in the future, but the rewind button at least allows you to fix some of this. Number three, save money, but don't stress too much about it. There are some incredible items later in the game that will allow you to become essentially invincible, but you have to have 10,000 gold to get them, so save. Number four, make sure that you buy status healing items. Statuses in this game game can be incredibly punishing, and you don't need too many of these status healing items, but a few in your inventory, say three or four of mind and body purifier, can be quite helpful. Number five, when fighting bosses, if they have henchmen, kill those first, because they'll take extra turns. Many of the henchmen in the game can use magic, which can do incredible amounts of damage to your party, so just kill them first. Number six, be generous with your party-wide healing items on the bosses. You have incredibly limited item space in this game, and eventually you'll be able to buy healing healing breezes at shops. Those heal your party for half of their HP, so don't be too stingy with those. I know, I know, we all want to stock up on elixirs, and in this game that's actually healing fogs, but don't do it. Just use them. You will be able to get more. And now some general battle tips. Number seven, use the defend command. In most RPGs, the defend command is pretty useless, but in this one, it is potentially the most useful command in the game. It will heal 10% of your HP and prevent you from being inflicted with any new status effects. It's a great way to preserve your healing and status items during battle. It also has all physical and magic damage, so it's incredibly useful. Number eight, use consumable magic items. When I first played this game, this was something that I didn't do, and this tip goes double because of all the glitches that are in the game. It's very hard to use Dragoon magic when your game freezes every single time you do. But with these consumable magic items, you can turn Shanna into an absolute powerhouse. Her magic attacks in human form will often do more than Dart's magic attacks in Dragoon form. It takes her from a deadweight physical attacker who can't use additions, which we'll talk about in just a bit, to one of the most powerful characters in the game. And again, she doesn't even have to Dragoon to get this power. She can also target the opposite elements of the enemy, which I will also talk about just a little bit later. Number nine, use your additions and switch them when they're maxed. When your character does a physical attack, you can press X to do additions. These add power to your physical attacks and allow you to gain spirit points, which will allow you to Dragoon and will allow allow you to raise the level of your Dragoons and gain more powerful magic attacks. Dragoon levels also help you stay in Dragoon form for longer. But in order to use the best additions, which substantially increase your battle power, you have to make sure that you go into the addition menu and switch them. Once you do 80 of a specific addition, that addition is maxed out and can't gain any more power. Also, once you complete all of the additions for a particular character, their most powerful addition opens up. These have power multipliers of 300 to 600%, and they are well worth your time to unlock. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit the like button. It helps my video in the algorithm and it helps let me know if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much. Number 11, take a look at the enemy's elements before you use attacks. Around the name of each enemy is a border that will say their name and also have a color attached to it. That color will tell you what element the enemy is. There are a total of eight elements in the game and six of those have opposites. Fire opposes water, earth opposes wind, and dark opposes light. If you use the opposite element against an enemy, that enemy will take additional damage. Which brings us to number 11, try to have a character in the party who is the same element as the enemy. If your character is the same element as an enemy, they'll take half damage. When all the other characters are defending, they'll recover HP and take half damage, but this character will take less damage at baseline, so you can have your other characters defend and have this one use healing items. Number 12 is abuse the agility stat. The agility stat is the most broken stat in the game, and with a high enough agility stat, some of your characters will attack twice in between all of the enemy's attacks. That can give you a chance to heal or just do some additional damage by attacking more. Certain characters have innately higher speed stats, for example, Shanna, Meru, and Hashel, and there are also items that will increase your agility, which are extremely useful to use. If you find one of these, just equip it immediately. It's worth it. 
Number 13 is kill the birds. You might notice as you play a subset of enemy that you can only do one damage to and that your attacks will miss. If you see one of these, you want to kill them. They'll give you extra gold and experience and make your game much easier to get through. And the easiest way to kill them is to use an item called a sachet. There are only a few sachets in the game, but they are dropped by piggies in the home of Gigantos, so you can farm them there if you're feeling especially patient. However, I recommend that you save the sachets that you get to kill the rainbow birds. They can only be killed by confusing them or with a sachet. And the confusion status is not reliable, so it's best to just use your sachets on the rainbow birds. They drop the rainbow dress, which is a great piece of armor for your female party members. It blocks status effects and has a good defense stat. And of course, they give a crap ton of experience. Next up is Dragoon Tips. Number 14, while it's tempting to Dragoon all the time, it's often better not to. First, you can avoid the glitches in the game that cause it to freeze. But second, even if you have a game that isn't freezing when you use Dragoons, there are enemies in the game that become stronger when you become a Dragoon or can weaken you in Dragoon form. So if you're having trouble on a boss, just try not Dragooning at all. Number 15, Special. If you are able to Dragoon without your game freezing, the special mechanic is pretty awesome. When all of your characters have max spirit points, Everyone can Dragoon at once using the special command, and it will create a unique field that will increase the damage of the person who selected the special command. It will also decrease incoming damage from the opposite element. For example, if Dart chooses the special command, he'll do more damage with his fire attacks, and opposing water attacks will be weakened. In addition, all Dragoon additions will be completed in full without you having to press any buttons, which can make the game a lot easier. This can really turn the tide in certain battles and allow you to deal finishing blow even when you're at low health. Just be aware though that whenever you Dragoon, any boosts that you get from your equipment will be nullified. For example, speed boosts won't apply and you won't get healing from any items that you have equipped. Which brings me to my next tip. Number 16, you can use Dragoon level 1 to your advantage. I know the instinct is to max all of your Dragoon levels so that you can stay in Dragoon form for the maximum amount of time, but one interesting technique that you can use is to turn into a Dragoon for just one turn. This will allow you to fire off a magic spell and get the benefit of it, but also not get weakened by any Dragoon weakening effects that are on the field and not strengthen any enemies that become emboldened by your Dragoon forms. In addition, because you can't use healing items in your Dragoon form, this will allow you to use a Dragoon spell and then immediately heal yourself. Or you can use a Dragoon spell and then immediately restore your magic points so that you're ready to use another one later in the battle. And finally, just a couple of tips for your own personal sanity and to help you make progress in the game. Number 16, if you get anyone big in your party, backtrack a bit. You might find something that's very useful that will help enhance that character. Number 17, don't get too attached to any one character. If you know, you know. Number 18, open every chest you can in a new town before you go to the shop to buy weapons. What did I just do here? Why did I just waste all of this money? Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and go watch my Legend of Dragoon magic tier list. It's fun. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.